Sue Cowley's come to the International School and Community College in Birmingham to work with teacher Nick Cooper. Nick is a graduate in neuroscience and on the Teach First program, learning to teach on the job. Today Nick will be teaching a Year 7 science lesson about kidney function and the ethics of transplants. Sue will be able to coach Nick from a nearby room using hidden cameras, microphones and a concealed earpiece. She will be looking at the pros and cons of moving around the classroom and commenting on how Nick is managing her class. So Nick, we're going to watch you with your Year 7 top set. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about the class? Well, they're quite a nice class. There's uh, 20 of them, 10 boys, 10 girls. Um, very high ability, especially one of the highest sets that I've actually taught in this school before. Right. Quite motivated, but there's a slight issue sometimes with keeping them engaged for long periods of time. Well, we're really looking forward to it. Brilliant, me too. We're about to watch Nick with her top set Year 7 science group. She's asked me to look at how group work's going with her bright students. They don't seem to be working together that well. And she's also wondering if she's being positive enough with them. She says she's got the discipline under control, but is she now being a bit too harsh? Yeah. We'll take a look and see. OK, Year 7's please. <laughs> if you're still writing, do so silently, please. I want those of you that were here, it's your job now, as a class, to look after the people that weren't here and make sure that they can understand all of those key words. So, I want Asim, please, for you to go up and label the solute on that diagram, and I want you to explain in a nice, clear voice what a solute is to the class. This school has managed to make provision for a small top set class. The school obviously sees it as important to have that individual focus from the teacher on the students. So today's lesson is going to be talking about solutions in relation to kidney stones. And on the board you can see a few pictures of kidney stones. <laughs> is it like poop? Well, who can remember how the kidney stones are formed? Anyone other than Dowd? We've got a lot from you today. Have a go. You were doing really well. You are doing really well. It's about cleaning... Cleaning what? Boys. Nick, if the boys talk over, rather than relating it to them, say, just pause, just pause till everybody's listening. Does any of you guys remember the painful way in which we have to get rid of kidney stones? There's a nice sense of humour going on here. She's got a nice sort of uh, humorous relationship going with them. There's a more of a probability that you can have some problems. If you lose one, you know, when you make it uh, harder for your kidneys to get rid of waste, like Yeah, it would do, exactly, because obviously we want to have two fully functioning kidneys. So we need to be likely to get... Don't call out, please. Right, I want to stop this now because I want to make sure that you're understanding what we are going to do. The top set, when they ask you something interesting or talk about something interesting, you, you want to kind of go with that. But at the same time, what you don't want to happen is get dragged off track from where you had intended the lesson to go. So it's always quite a delicate balance. OK, we've got bonds in there, but we could say it's a solid, but let's think about the new keywords. Solute. Solute, well done. Good look round at the board. Taking the initiative, well done. These ones. Solvent, OK? And we know that a solution is when we've added the solute to the solvent. We don't need a gas. Nick, the boys at the far end, away from where you can see them, are a bit kind of distracted. Maybe drag some of them round. Jack, can you come round here for me, please? Just so you don't think you can really see the board. And you two as well. I want you to be able to see this. Adela, move around there for me. OK, thank you very much. A little bit too much noise there, wasn't there? <coughs> now, what we've got in front of us is we've got our human model, our human model of, of a solid and our human model of a liquid. Some of you touching, some of you around. Ah, with your pencil as well. Well remembered, Azim. 
Right. So we're very hands-on here, nice and kinesthetic, getting them up to actually model what she's talking about. What a saturated solution is. And the whole point of this is to make sure that you can use those key words that you've written down. So refer back to them for help. Something that I am noticing with Nick is that the camera has to move the whole time to follow her. Now, this is lovely in a way because she's making good use of the space. But there's an extent to which it might be distracting some of the quieter students who like to have a more settled atmosphere. You've got only two minutes to have it finished, please, because I don't want the people that have finished waiting around. Uh, yeah. Rubbish. <laughs> I think we just saw a little bit of the real Nick there. It's this very kind good, of teacher good. Nick, but occasionally you get a little glimpse, which I think children really That's love when they guys. see a bit of the real person. You've got one minute on whatever you're doing, just one more minute. Right, you three come up here, please. Right. I'm going to sit at the back here. Now, the first thing, what do they need to do? Should they go anywhere near equipment? No. No, why? Like, if they, if they don't get to that equipment, it's like, uh, they get Okay, so we've got a risk on breakages, but what, what, what else? What should... So a bit of risk assessment here, a bit of health and safety before we get started. And she's got the children to identify what the risks might be, which is a great way to do it. So, what you have in front of you is something, a whole list of information about kidney stones. Your task is, as a group, it says on the board, can you make a suggestion in the correct order about the formation of kidney stones. So they're not in the right order. Your job is trying to put them in the right order. In a low ability class, you might want to keep things still and calm and quiet. And your body language, your movement around the room can feed into that. But with this top set, she's certainly keeping up the pace of the lesson. OK. Whilst you do that... OK. These are your... Six patients. One of them need a kidney transplant. Well, they all need kidney transplants, but there's only one... So what's happening here is the students have been doing a, a sorting card activity and now some of the more able ones have finished that, so they're moving on to the ethical dilemmas around the idea of kidney transplants. So what well. Nick's Very done good. is she's given them some sort of character studies, which of these people yeah. most deserves the transplant, and she's asking them to talk about that. And what we'll do is, after lunchtime, I'll go through with a little bit about what you've missed, OK? Number four. Number four. He's Son, 69. He's 69. Never smoke. No, 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 no. And he's got a renal tumor that requires transplant, and he's got a renal tumor that requires OK, so what are you saying? It might look like there's lots of different things going on in this lesson and that the sort of central thread is a bit lost. But actually, I think what Nick's done is she's differentiated the activity so well that she can have one group doing the extension task, then hand it to the next group and so on. Nick, give those girls a bit of positive reinforcement because they're really on task when she's finished reading that one out. We just want to have a go at thinking of the ethics behind it. You've been working really well today, girls. Mohammed. Huh? You've chosen this person. So why? Nick is being drawn to the right-hand side of her lab quite a bit. I don't know if that's because that's where the boys sit. Or perhaps it's because she's right-hand dominant. A lot of teachers don't realise this, but if you're right-handed, your tendency will be to focus on the right-hand side of your room. And what you need to do is make a conscious decision to focus over to the left. OK. 
Keep your goggles on, remember. Nick, when you get the whole class together, can you stand completely still and don't kind of go into talking to them until they're ready? You might do a little hand signal, maybe a couple of clicks, clap, everyone looking this way. Okay, your sevens. You need those. Dad, the shoelace can be done in a minute, OK? Sit yourself down, please. Jack, I've asked you to stop. OK, brilliant. Sometimes you can get so involved in kind of keeping the teaching and learning moving that you forget to ever pause. I think, actually, that's the first time she's actually paused during this lesson. She's got this lovely active style, but in a few years' time, it's going to start to take it out of her energy-wise. The last thing that we're going to have a look at just before we go to lunch is talking about what kidney stones... Now, Nick's learnt on the job. She's been in the classroom from day one and doing a lot of studying at the same time, lots of lesson plans, lots of schemes of work, she's been telling me. And what's interesting is how that has influenced her style. She's come in as a scientist as opposed to as a trained teacher. She's got really good classroom management. It, it's a dry style, but they're certainly responding to it. I know she's had a lot of mentoring from the head of teaching and learning, and that's obviously been a great help to her. Overall, I think she's doing great. There's a few little issues I, I'd like to talk to her about after the lesson, but I think she's a really successful teacher. Did you enjoy that? How did you feel it went? I thought it went OK, actually. It was less nerve-wracking than I thought, and it wasn't as bad with the earpiece as everything that I'd uh, imagined it was going to be, so I was pleased. Did you deliberately split them into boys and girls when they were grouped? No. When they first came in um, as a group right at the start of Year 7, I like to give my groups the option to sit where they like right. and give them a bit more responsibility and trust straight off. And then what happens is, if they do misbehave, I then tend to move them. And I find that works quite well. I've always taken completely the opposite approach, in that I've always assumed from day one that whatever the group activity, there will always be mixed gender, because I think it teaches children a really important lesson about mixing with the other genders. And I think if it's an assumption right from the start, they never think to question it. I think one other thing I noticed is that you have this right-hand dominance thing in the classroom, <laughs> and that that side of the room tends to be where you stand, where you focus your attention. And it's just something to be aware of, because it, it's easily corrected, but unless you're actually aware that you're doing it, you don't necessarily realise it's happening. Mm -hmm. Your movement around the room is amazing but just sometimes give yourself a break <laughs> because by the time you get to 25, you're going to be like on your knees if you keep that sort of pace up. You know, sometimes step back and have a little relax. <laughs>